neither of us are going to intimidate each other in that kind of way. Uh, have I gone under the skin? Yes. Was I trying to get under the skin? No, not really. Uh, I just wanted to, I just think this guy doesn't like the fact that he's not in control. And what absolutely kills him the most is that he can't get under my skin and that's what's done this to him. He's, uh, he's very stressed out, he's very agitated, very anxious. And he just seems very angry, if you ask me. I mean, I'm not angry and I'm not nervous. Why should I be nervous or angry? I've done everything I possibly can. Nothing's changed from 16 weeks ago. I'm still facing the guy who wants to punch me head in. And uh, it is what it is. We're in a day and age where social media is prominent. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of stuff's come out with pics of David on the yard, pics of David out. Fantastic do lifestyle, you, do, isn't it? But do you think... None of it is, though, you know. It's all make-believe. But do you think he's doing it for you? Do you reckon he's taking certain pictures, certain social media posts are going out? You know? no, I don't think it's for me, no. I don't think he cares two hoots about me. Uh, I think that's just the lifestyle he likes and that's what he wants to portray. I think he wants to portray the, the British Floyd Mayweather, but the difference with, with it is Floyd Mayweather owns everything that's in his pictures. He ain't own a bleeding thing that's in these pictures you're doing, boy. I don't know what he's doing, so... Uh, I just I don't know. Listen, he will have done a sparring, obviously, well, I hope so, in a boxing gym. I uh, don't think he's going to be sparring on that Skyfall yacht, whoever it is, I don't think he'd allow that. Anything else? No, I just think he, that's the way he wants to live his life, that's what he wants to do. This helmet wants to sip protein shakes out of a cocktail glass. I mean, it's highly embarrassing, but if that's what floats your boat, then so be. He's not hurting no one, is he? Uh, he's saying he's going to hurt me on Saturday, but I don't believe that either. Well, what do you make of the sort of the Achilles injury rumours that came out yesterday? The, the, it was everywhere. Just an excuse for when he loses. Yeah. That's all it is. It's planting the seed now. You know what it is? The closer it gets, the more the more it becomes apparent that he knows the hit. Fighters lie to themselves. We do it all the time. I've been doing it since I was a child. I'm deluded. I've got a screw loose. We just do it. You don't really think we enjoy getting punched in the face, do you? Come on, it's not nice, it hurts. Uh, he's been telling himself he's just going to get rid of me in two rounds, two rounds, but the closer it draws upon him, he's like, imagine if it doesn't end in two rounds. Am I really prepared for the 12-round fight? And he knows deep down he's not. So what does he do? He starts saying he's injured, he starts taking pictures in Germany when I pointed out two days earlier you've been going to Germany, but he's only sending us pictures now. He's just doing different things and then today, all the way through this build-up, it's been, I'm in great shape, I'm prepared for anything, I've got no injuries at all. But to, at today's press conference, it was changed a little bit, it was, I'm in the best shape I can possibly be, I'm throwing the right combinations I need to throw. But the other day, you just told me you're in the best shape you've ever been in, I'm facing the best version of you, so I'm getting a guy who's got something wrong with him, and he's saying he, he can't do certain things, but he's saying he can throw punches, or am I getting the best version of him? It's just all excuses. Believe me, when he loses on Saturday, it will be as I didn't take him seriously. Look at the training I prepared on a yacht. I had an Achilles injury. My shoulder wasn't right. There'll be some excuse. Do you know what you'll get from me? When I win, I told you so. Giving me glory. If the unforsaken happens and I lose, no excuse for lost to the best fighter on the match. Simple as that. It's That's what you call being a man. It's more your thoughts from a David Hay maybe six years ago to a David Hay that's now. What's the difference in your eyes? He's lost his mentor. Okay. And he's forgot why he's doing it. Simple as that. Do you think he's doing it for the money? Of course he is. This guy's talking about being heavyweight champion of the world again and dominating the heavyweight. Why the hell are you facing a cruiserweight then? <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. I'm saying what he's saying. He's saying he's the best heavyweight. Did you guys just sit there and listen to him say, I'm the best heavyweight in the world? What the hell are you doing facing a cruiserweight? <laughs> I'm not a heavyweight. I've never said I am. Anthony Joshua's a heavyweight. Deontay Wilder's a heavyweight. Vladimir Klitschko's a heavyweight. He's facing Tony Valley, WBC Cruiserweight Champion of the World. So any final messages to your fans, the little Pugilians that obviously are riled by yeah. what David said, and also people that are watching just all over the world. I don't have fans, I have friends, so if you support me, the friend, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I feel embarrassed when you say fans, I actually, people shouldn't have fans, should have friends who support you, so thank you very much, uh, I appreciate it. Tune in Saturday, 
and uh, watch the ending of Hayfaker Point Two and tune in to the beginning of Hayfaker Point Three. Thank you very much. Shane had it again. Yeah, <laughs> the pictures that were sent out were just two or something. What, what pictures were there? Well, the, 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 the Shane didn't even know he was on his way to Germany when he was on the private jet there. This is something <coughs> Yeah, Shane didn't even have a clue. Uh, Shane has no idea what they was doing or when he's doing it. Uh, if, if, Shane had, if Shane had any influence over David, then I'm pretty much sure he wouldn't have allowed David to spend the whole of Christmas and the whole of basically November in Miami. Because as a boxing coach who's trained fighters for 12 round fights, you know you need a lot more time than four weeks to prepare for, for a 12 round fight. You need he knows that. The best way of asking Shane to reply to that is, why do you drag Carl Frampton away from his family from Ireland and bring them to London 14 weeks before he's due to fight? But then you will only need to train David for four weeks before he's due for the same amount of time for the fight. So he's happy to train David for four weeks for the 12-round fight, but he has to train Carl Frampton 14 weeks before the fight. Do you know why? Was with one fighter, he's got one fighter who respects him as a coach and who he trains from, from day one. He's got another fighter who's telling him what he's doing. And that, that, that is not right in, in boxing. Your coach is the man who structures a training camp, he structures how he wants you to train. That can't be done for a 12 round fight or like four weeks, I'm sorry to tell you. It just can't be done. But like saying Shed, like Shane, like Shane, he's insane. Like Shane said, he only needs four weeks to be Tony Bellew, so we'll see. And I hope don't go past, go past four, boy. How far do you think it will go? I'd love it to get to seven, eight, nine. Because I'm playing. I don't want to knock him out. In all honesty, I don't want to knock him out because in boxing, when you've got a bit, when you've got a puncher like me and a puncher like him, either one man, you can just go. I would love nothing more than this to get into a dog fight and then him to show his true colours because if this goes past eight rounds, believe you me, he's gonna quit. He's gonna spew it. Just like he did all them years ago against Orlando Solis and then all them years a bit later against Carl Thompson. The going got tough, he couldn't get rid of a guy and he quits. Trust me, he's got quit in him. I've never quit in my life. I just can't do it. That's the only thing that scares me in this fight. I can't quit. I have mate, I've prepared for a fucking dog fight, a, a monster fight, a killer fight, whatever you want to say mate, I've prepared for it in every way, shape and form, it's alright, don't stress my answer, go on, so I've prepared for the worst fight called? possible. Is that why you started to go? No, I brought Dell in because I want to work on the inside game with a big strong man, and he come into the, at the later end of sparring, so I would have really fast guys early on in the sparring sessions, and then Dell will come in later when it's man up time. And let me tell you, mate, no one mans up like that. <laughs> let me tell you, when, when the bear gets older, he gets older, mate. He's like, uh, like breathing. Joe Frazier, he just gets older. <laughs> and you're rough and you're up. Boom, 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 boom. It's on. And, and to deal with a guy who's like Dell, who must be, what, I'm guessing, 18 stone now at the minute, to be able to hold your own and dig back. And Dell will tell you, you know, I ain't been manhandled in my life by any fighter, no matter regardless of weight or size. So. It was good for it. It served the purpose that it needed to serve, and I'm very grateful to Del for coming on and helping me the way he did. I'm very, very lucky to have friends like Del uh, around me. Yeah, Del Powell said that yeah, it was really, really impressive. Del was really impressed how you sparred with him. Yeah. Yeah, really, really. yeah, because people, you have this perception that I'm a little cruiserweight and I can't push guys back. People are shocked when they see how strong I am physically. I've always been a physically strong guy. I've been wrestling with with 17, 18 stone memory for a long time. And I've been fighting with big ass men since I was a kid. So size doesn't really matter or intimidate or, or, or impose me in any kind of way. So I'm just game, I just fight. Tony, did you say you prepared any different or trained any different for this? No, year? not at all. I've trained really, really hard. I've been really, really thorough with my training diligence. Uh, 
It's been the same as the other camps, to be honest. I've got there's been times where I've got uh, I've had colds, coughs, as we all do through camps. Winters just a horrible time to train through, but everything's gone normal. I, I've had I've had better camps than this, but I've had well worse camps. The best win in my career, I had the worst camp in my life at Goodison. I Means I had a detached foot, ribbon, had a cracked left knuckle. My ass was falling out my shorts before I even got in the ring. Made my ass was twitching. I was nervous, scared. I'm not scared, but nervous. For this one, I'm relaxed. I'm happy. Camp's gone as best as it could have possibly went. I'm in really great shape. You will get no excuses from me, regardless of what happens. I know what I'm getting into. I know what I'm capable of. Saturday night, eh, I'm coming to take my glory. And finally, you believe you give him the rematch that you said you would give him? I literally, I make him get down on his knees and beg. <laughs> but yeah, I will. Um, Tony, um, did you find David disrespectful about what he said about Liverpool and its people? Yeah, I think it was wrong. I think it was disgusting and wrong. Uh, you shouldn't pull the race card, like I say. Uh, I'm from mixed race myself, my mother's black, my father's white. Uh, it's just wrong, you should not use that card, it's wrong to use, you know. Someone don't label a crowd of over a thousand people if you had one man this idiot and the one man this idiot didn't actually say a racist word <coughs> you know let's get that straight here he, he's retracted his comments now I believe and he said he said something else but there ain't no racist people in there because if you're being racist to him then you're being racist to me you've got to understand that because I'm the same as him and, and there was other guys in there and stuff so I just think it's disgusting very distasteful and something that that shouldn't even be thought about I mean we're in 2000 and 17. It, it just made it just a different world. Show me somewhere right now. I'm struggling to see someone who is a full full breed these days because I'm not, I'm a mongrel. But mate, so is 90% of the breeding world these days. So I don't understand even how racism still exists. It exists in people's small ass minds who are over the age of 40, in my opinion, and they need strangling, slapping, and putting down. Thank you. Okay, look. And just on the mixed race, how's yeah. that uh, sort of and mixed race as well? Okay. It's, uh, it's not it's not easy at the best of times because no, you can get not. grief off one side and hand off the other. So both ends of the spectrum, mate. Yeah, how's, I am, that, uh, how's that affected you growing up? How's that affected me growing up? Mate, I'm a mongrel, like I say, I just go into the environment and it be me. I don't really give a crap about what people think or say. Yeah, I'm from the south end of Liverpool and I boxed in the north, two very different areas to grow up in. If you've done your research, you'd see which area predominantly in which ends. Yeah. Uh, and I've grown, I've, I've, I've been raised in one area and I've grown up in another. So I've, I've, I've endured both ends of the spectrum, mate. And the only way I could say about racism is I'd meet it head on. Usually with a fist, if it comes to me. So, uh, but it very rarely happens, you know. On a handful of times in my life as I've ever come across it, and was it Tuesday, Monday night? Was not one of them. And believe you me, I would be first to act if I thought someone had said something in a racist way, like in my, especially in my city. I would be first. Well, I'm happy that someone's saying it. I just think it's wrong, lad. It's wrong. Like I say, my mother's black and father's white. I had never seen nobody. Well, I've seen racism, obviously. There's idiots in every city: London, Liverpool, Glasgow, Edinburgh. There's, there's racist pockets everywhere you go in the world. That's life. But from what I've seen and from what I know, not where I'm from, mate. Sony, can I just get a prediction from you on on um, Danny Garcia's fighting Keith Thurman the same That's night? Good fight, that. Good fight. Can I get your prediction for that fight? Uh, it's a good fight. Do you know what? I, I think I'm going to have to go with Thurman on points. Why? I just think he's technically the better fighter. But I do think Garcia's dangerous as long as he's on his feet, man. That left hook he slings, he doesn't even look where he's slinging it, but if it lands, boy, you just go and sleep. Uh, I think Garcia is a very, very good fighter. He's a, he's, a, he's a throwback Philly fighter, that's what Garcia is. He's someone who trades in the pocket, doesn't really have too much cares for what's coming back at him, just, just <laughs> slings straight up like a gun sling and fight. I think it'll be a good fight, but I think Thurman will be clever and he'll pick his spots going down the stretch. And I just think that may be the, the little bit of difference. But it's close. I'd, I'd edge 60-40 in Thurman's favour. But I think it's a brilliant fight. They both deserve massive props and credit for taking it. Uh, and it's good to see Al Heyman uh, matching his own, his own guys together. 
Sonny, thank you very much. Appreciate Pleasure. It. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Just